We can go ahead and make our way to our text for the day, and we're continuing our uh, sermon series in the book of Acts, chapter 3. <clears throat> today we're looking at verses 11 through 26. Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 26. These are the words of God. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people utterly astounded ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through, that is through Jesus has given this man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ig- ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. That times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel Samuel and those who came after him also proclaim these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. It's the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you as we gather together to worship now that you are with us and that you have sent your servant, Jesus, to heal us and to refresh us, to restore us, and most of all, to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. We come now before you cleansed in his blood and ask you to instruct us in his name that you would be with us through and through as we hear from your word. Let us hear the things that you want us to hear. Apply them to our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit for your servant Jesus' sake. Amen. Refreshing and restoring. There are lots of things that uh, refresh us and restore us nowadays. Uh, You can think of jumping into a pool on a hot summer day. That's refreshing, right? Or maybe going on a vacation uh, to the mountains by yourself or maybe with one of your loved ones. That would be restoring and refreshing. Or maybe like the fellow here in our bulletin. I don't don't know if he was doing a hike in the mountains or not, but uh, if you were out there hiking and uh, you were parched and you got you, got you one of them sports drinks that we have nowadays with all the electrolytes in it. And you drink it down. Ah, it's going to refresh you, right? Refresh you and restore you. Um, in our text, we see that God sends us refreshing and restoring through Jesus. But it's not the kind of refreshing, uh, refreshing and restoring that lasts for just a moment. It's refreshing and restoring that lasts forever. Um, And those who don't listen to Jesus, we see, on the other hand, receive the exact opposite. So I want to talk about both of those things today. Two points. The first is the time of refreshing and restoring has come. Those who repent will have their sins blotted out. That's one. Second, the time of refreshing and restoring has come. Those who do not listen will be destroyed. So, um, I'll look at that first point. Um... Those who repent will have their sins blotted out. And I just want to read uh, verses 17 through 21 again. We're not going to read that whole thing, but drop down to verse 
uh, 17 with me, if you will. And we'll read on down to verse 21. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that is, Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. So, um, remember, um, Peter and John are... Uh, still at the temple. And Peter has just made this man walk who everybody knew could never walk a day in his life. And what Peter goes on to show is that this miracle means that God is doing something very specific in the world. I'll come back to that in just a second. But just to set the stage a little bit, Uh, the people are amazed. They're gawking at Peter and John. And Peter's basically like, why are you looking at us like we did this thing? This is obviously an act of God. And so Peter immediately is pointing away from himself to Jesus, the one who had actually performed the miracle through his hands. And what Peter goes on to say is that this same Jesus who they murdered was their Messiah. The same Jesus that they murdered was their Messiah. So um, the one that they had been um, waiting for, the holy and righteous one, as Peter calls him here, the very author of life himself, they killed him and God raised him from the dead and seated him on his throne. Okay, And the evidence Peter is saying here that he was their Messiah is that God raised him from the dead and that they are witnesses uh, to this. And Peter says to them that the healing that he performed came straight from the hands of Jesus. And what this means is that the times of refreshing and restoration were upon them. And they would know what this meant because they knew that throughout the Bible, God spoke of this time of refreshing and restoration. We read about some of it this morning in Isaiah 65. They knew that it was promised that when the Messiah came, that he would heal their land, he would forgive their sins, and death would be no more. And what Peter is telling them here is that that time has come, and if he, if they were to repent, God will send those blessings to them. God will send them Jesus, just as he sent him to the man who was born lame. So, in effect, what Peter is saying here is just as they were able to heal this man who was born lame in the name of Jesus, if they repent at the preaching of Peter and John and the others, that God would send Jesus to blot out their sins. Just as he sent him to heal, he would send him to forgive their sins. So Peter is, is just um, reporting the good news to them. And this is the best news that they could have ever heard because the very thing that they had been waiting for, God was already doing in the world. The twist was he was doing it through this man, Jesus, that they had killed. Um, and what Peter says to them is that if they repent, that... God will blot out their sins and he will send them these blessings um, that they have been waiting for right now. And that message is just as valid for us today as it was for them then. 
when Jesus came into the world, he brought the kingdom of God with him. The, the, the kingdom of God broke into the world when Jesus came. And this is why when Jesus goes around in his ministry, one of the reasons anyway, he goes around healing the blind and the lame, forgiving sin, raising people from the dead. All of these things are just a foretaste of the kingdom. And what Peter is saying is that these eternal blessings are available to us right now. Jesus is in heaven. He's on his throne and the kingdom of God is coming into the world. And it has been ever since the first century. And if we repent, he will send us times of refreshing and restoration. Um, That is, he will forgive our sins and he will send us these eternal blessings. If we repent, he will restore our lives completely. And not only will he restore our lives, he will restore the world around us. Uh, We will experience growth and prosperity as people repent and the kingdom grows. So, I mean, you can think about it. We'll experience growth and prosperity as people repent and the kingdom grows. What what does this mean? We'll experience the blessings, the eternal blessings of God from heaven right now in time and in history. We'll experience... Judicial, medical, technological, cultural, societal, advancement, you name it. We will prosper in every way as a people because here is the thing. Now that Jesus is on the throne, God is at work to renovate this old world completely. That is what he is doing. And he's in the process of doing it right now. But again... It starts with us. It starts with repentance and faith. And so right now, (laughs) right now, we can have these blessings, um, but it starts with repentance and faith in Jesus. And that goes for us as individuals. It goes for our families. It goes for our nation. It goes for the whole world. It all starts with repentance and faith And Jesus, again, Jesus is on the throne. He is ruling and reigning and God is at work to restore all things in the world through him. But it comes, the way this restoration comes is through repentance and faith. God has been doing this work for 2,000 years, ever since Jesus ascended to the throne. And he is going to continue uh, to do it until the last day. So, repentance and faith. God will blot out our sins. He will refresh us. He will restore us completely. So that's first. The time of refreshing and restoring has come. Those who repent will have their sins blotted out. Second, the time of refreshing and restoring has come. Those who do not listen will be destroyed. Uh, Let's look at verse 22 through 26 again. Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every uh, soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaim these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. uh, wickedness. So, Peter has another message here. For those who do not repent, he reminds them that Moses, who they all trusted, 
uh, had said that one day he was going to raise up a prophet like him, a prophet like Moses, who they would listen to. And the people who did not listen to that prophet would be destroyed. And what Peter goes on to say, along with Stephen, as we'll see later on, is that Jesus is that prophet. Um, what the prophets were looking forward to, the days when that prophet had come, uh, would come, had come upon them. Jesus was that prophet that they were to listen to. Uh, he goes on to quote another promise that they would have known about. That was a prophecy, but this is a promise. Um, one that was made to Abraham. And there was a promise that was made to Abraham that said in this same individual that he was just talking about, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And again, Peter says that that is referring to Jesus. And so he, he says that he sends, God sends Jesus to you first. He sends him to the Jews first. Now why is this? Um, throughout the book of Acts, God is always, the, pro the apostles are always going to the Jews first because God had made promises to the Jews and to covenant. Uh, co he covenanted with the Jews. So the apostles are going to the Jews first and they're saying things to them like, Jesus is the one. He's in heaven. He's on his throne. If you repent, God will blot out your sins. If you don't repent, you will be destroyed. Um, and so what Peter, and, and that's effectively, that's what Peter is saying here. Um, he's saying that those days have come upon us. And if you listen to Jesus, if you turn from your sins and you turn from your rebellion, God will restore you. He will forgive you. But if you do not, then you will be destroyed. And um, we know that from the book of Acts, there were many Jews who uh, turned to Christ and who joined the church. And they experienced those eternal blessings that God had promised uh, to uh, Abraham. Jesus sent them directly from heaven through the Holy Spirit to every individual that listened. And they were spared from the judgment. Um, but on the other hand, those people who continued in their sin and in their rebellion, just as Jesus said when he judged Jerusalem in 70 AD, he did say that he was coming to judge their nation for their sin. Just as Jesus had said, when he came, those people were swept up in the judgment. And they died, and they were judged, and they dropped off into eternity, and they are now suffering under eternal condemnation. You see how that works? So, um, we are the people who are living on the other side of this historical judgment on Jerusalem in 70 AD. And by the way, that judgment was the vindication of Jesus. It proved that Jesus is who he said he was and that he was going to do what he said he was going to do. It proves that he is on the throne, that he is the king, and that he is restoring all things. And he is still at work in the world t uh, today to send refreshing and restoration and likewise, he's still at work in the world today to bring judgment. And that is the point. Uh, Peter goes on to say that if you do not listen to Jesus, um, you will not re experience times of refreshing and restoration. You will instead experience times of judging and condemnation. Right? So instead of refreshing and restoration, instead of blessing from God in heaven, judgment and condemnation. Now, we don't want to, we want the refreshing and the restoration, right? <laughs> we don't want judgment and condemnation. So how do we get refreshing and restoration? We listen to Jesus. 
What does it look like to listen to Jesus? Well, when you hear the gospel, when you hear the commandments of God, you respond to these things in faith and obedience. Respond to Jesus in faith and obedience to him as Lord. And if we do, God will send refreshing and restoration into our lives now. He will forgive us, he will bless us, and will experience uh, prosperity uh, in our lives now. But on the other hand, <laughs> if we don't listen to Jesus, if we don't repent, uh, we will experience judgment and suffering and condemnation right now. Now, how does that work itself out? Well, I, I think that the judgment manifests itself in, in, in many different ways in our uh, culture today. But we could just say, for, for one thing, one of the ways that this judgment is manifesting itself today is that people can't reason in a straight line anymore. We don't know the difference from up and down in our culture anymore. We don't know the difference from right and wrong and good and evil. We don't even know the difference between boys and girls anymore. And this is all a result, this is all the consequence of not listening to Jesus. <laughs> um, and really, it's just a foretaste of the judgment that people who refuse to listen to Jesus until the end are going to experience throughout all of eternity. And you see how that works? So um, the judgment that we see on individuals and the judgment we see manifesting itself in people's lives and in our culture today is going to be multiplied infinitely in eternity. Just like the blessings that we receive today as Christians are going to be multiplied infinitely in eternity. You see how that works? So really, at the end of the day, it, it comes down to this. Um, those who listen to Jesus are blessed forever. Those who don't listen to Jesus are destroyed forever. That's, that's how it works. That's the paradigm. So uh, Jesus is on the throne. He is ruling and reigning today. Those who repent receive refreshing and restoration today, blessing in their lives today. All the eternal blessings of God are breaking into our world today, and they're available to us. And they're just a foretaste of all the goodness that we will experience throughout all of eternity. And likewise, on the other hand, those who refuse to listen, those who turn and continue on in their way, experience judgment now today. Because again, Jesus is on his throne, and he's still reigning. He's still sending judgments into the world today. And I think that's obvious if we look around. Uh, we can see that this culture is under judgment, right? And we see it in individuals. We see it in groups of people. We see it in nations. So again, the answer is the same for us. It's the same, uh, it, it's a, it's the same answer for us as it was for them. It's the same answer, answer for us individually, uh, culturally, nationally. Um, the answer is repentance and faith in Jesus. <laughs> That's the problem today. The problem today is unbelief. You just get right down to it and make it simple. The problem today is unbelief. And we will continue to experience judgment as long as there is unbelief in our nation. Um, but um, the promise for those who repent, the promise for those who believe, is that God will blot out your sins. He will remove them wipe them away completely and he will send you blessings from heaven through the hands of Jesus Christ today, right now. Right now. Those who do not, you get the exact opposite. Right? <clears throat> Judgment and condemnation instead. So, um, let me restate my point if I have it. I guess I don't. Um, the time of refreshing and restoring has come. Uh, those who do not listen will be restored. <laughs> refreshing and restoring. Uh, we have seen that the ultimate refreshing and restoring comes to us through Jesus. Um, those who repent, God blots out their sins. And he sends them blessings from heaven. He renovates our lives completely. And he renovates uh, the world 
around us completely. Those, on the other hand, who do not repent, they will experience uh, judgment instead of refreshing. They will experience destruction instead of restoration. Those who do not listen to Jesus come under the condemnation of Jesus in their lives now and forever in eternity. So, make it real simple, easy exhortation. Um, What should we do? Repent today. Repent every day and listen to Jesus. Repent today, repent every day, and listen to Jesus. There's many things in this world that can bring us refreshing and restoring, but only Jesus can refresh you and restore you forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for gathering us to worship Jesus. We thank you that you reveal yourself to us plainly in your word. And we thank you that we can know exactly what it is that you expect of us. We can know exactly how you are working in the world. Um, We know um, what we need to do if we would like to see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as we pray every week. Give us this grace for Jesus' sake to, to, to see it in our own lives, in our family, here in Mount Perry and throughout this community, we pray that you would send refreshing and restoration to us as we look to Jesus, as we repent, as we trust him, as we obey him as Lord. Send refreshing into our lives. Send restoration into our land. We pray that he would reign, that his kingdom would come, that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. May Jesus be magnified and glorified in our lives, in this church, and in this world. We ask it in his name. Amen.